Hello everyone, my name is Pepsilk and welcome to Thoughts On. This is a series where I analyze games and give my opinions on them. Today, we'll be looking at Katana Zero. Katana Zero is a game I happened to stumble upon in my Steam catalog, considering that at the time I was browsing, I had no idea on what to play despite having 700 games from subscriptions, giveaways, impulse purchases, and god knows where else. Majority of my games usually come from Humble Bundle, which for those that don't know, is a monthly subscription service where you get a set of games every month, usually 12 for a price of roughly $18 to $20, resulting in a set that can usually cost well over $200, saving you tons of money and giving you games that you wouldn't expect to play. I highly recommend this description if you have absolutely nothing to play because, I mean, you get 12 games and you always have something to play, ensuring that there is a game available to you at all times. It's great value and well worth your money. No sponsor by the way, just wanted to throw it out there for those that may be interested in getting some fun and cool games. Anyway. Katana Zero happened to be one of those humble games that I got years ago, but I never bothered to play it until now, and since I was looking for something that wasn't an FPS game, I figured I'd give this a play. And let me just say, I'm glad to have played it. Hell, I'm shocked I didn't play it when I first got it. It's amazing how well indie games do in this day and age of modern gaming, because there's no microtransactions, additional content, or things to buy. What you get with Katana Zero is a short, full-blown and action-packed experience filled with combat, drugs, an intricate and interesting story, and a soundtrack that'll blow your ears away and make you want to listen to it outside of the game. I'm here to break it down and take you on a trip to talk about what makes this game pure, unadulterated fun. If you enjoy the video, like, subscribe and notifications turned on for more gaming content. Let's talk about it, shall we? Katana Zero's story got me confused for a minute at first as I wasn't sure what was going on with all these characters seemingly popping up at different times and the drive that takes over your character's body and soul, but ultimately comes together by the end of the game. You play as an unnamed man with no history or information on his past. The only information you are given about him in the game is from the game Psychiatrist, where the character seemingly fought in the war and got given a service medal for his actions. You work alongside the Psychiatrist, killing very important targets that pose a threat to him and the company he works for, and in return, he provides you with doses of a very special drug known as Kronos, giving you the ability to slow down time for a period, which turns into one of the game's main mechanics. It can also rewind time, so if you were to die while under the effects of it, you don't necessarily die. Instead, you become immortal in a sense, allowing you to go back moments just before you die, which becomes important throughout moments of the game as you'll be going back over and over to figure out how to properly proceed without getting yourself killed. Kronos is such an interesting concept for me because time isn't something that's typically explored or talked about in video games. Yes, there's been games that have covered the concept of time such as Time Shift with its experimental beta suit, Dishonored 2, with its amazing crack in the slab level where you swap between the past and the present to navigate through a matter, and Titanfall 2 in similar fashion as well, using a time gauntlet to push through different sections of the facility. But never have I played a game that has explored time as a drug. Imagine our world in about 20 years where people can take this sort of drug in order to say, slow down their aging or become immortal for a period of time, leading them to do something incredibly dumb like jump off a high building to see how it feels then reverse back moments before you did it so you can shake it off like nothing ever happened. Another way of illustrating the use of Kronos is whenever you complete a section in the game, the game says to you, yes, this would work, and then plays a replay showcasing all of the actions that you just did, which is both fascinating and interesting, because I wonder if the characters are able to predict the future in some sort of way. Maybe I'm just overthinking it, since dying in this game plays a key part in establishing the dangerous uses of Kronos and how it can really mess up your brain if you take too much of it. As the story progresses, the unnamed character meets new characters, like V for instance, who's your typical Russian mobster, but one who also happens to be under the influence of Kronos as well. He even fanboys you when you first meet him, as you are known to him as the Dragon, an infamous killer of sorts around the 3rd district, which is where the game takes place. He's unstable, dangerous, and someone who isn't to be trifled with, as he'll kill anyone and anything to make a point, which is seen in one of the game's cutscenes where he hurts the unnamed character's neighbors next door, which, to be frank, is a pretty fair punishment for them, considering that they always full blast music, making it hard for everyone in the building to sleep. The Psychiatrist is another interesting character who talks to you after every mission, asking questions about your day and the nightmares you've been having, as well as continuing to give you doses of Kronos to keep you sane and ready to kill, which your character generally enjoys doing, even if you can't see the emotions when he says it. As the days go by, other characters come into the fray too, such as Snow, which you know little to nothing about other than her somehow being related to Kronos and working for some organization since she appears very few times in the game. The real dragon, who happens to be named 15, as you get to play him once during one of the game's missions, and the little girl, who I would argue is the best character in the game, since she appears for almost every home sequence, 
and the man begins to build a parental-like relationship with her. She first appears as a kid who lived in the apartment next door, and starts to talk to the man more often after finding one of her toys, which somehow appeared in the man's apartment. The best moment between the two is when they're up on the roof, and she talks about wanting to get out of the third district and explore the other districts, which the man carefully puts it into consideration. This is also a key moment for the protagonist as he shows the medal to her and talks about not taking it off in over 7 years, reminding himself that, no matter what I'm doing, I did something good once, despite having no recollection of what he did all those years ago. He then proceeds to throw the medal away, knowing that he has other reminders that are more important to him and showing a sign of change. In terms of the girl's origins, there is no information about her, something which I hope gets explained in the upcoming DLC that they have cooking. The Masked Men are another favourite of mine, appearing in the man's hallucinations and nightmares. Their names are Comedy and Tragedy and have different personalities, with Comedy being the light one out of the two with his bewildering and funny commentary, and Tragedy being the kind of man to embrace violence, speaking in grim and dark tones. He tends to be the one that talks more and serves as a narrator during each sequence they're brought into. One of the most important parts of the game is at the end of Chinatown, where you must choose between life or death. They don't make it as obvious too, as I ultimately decided to pick life and see what happens. The game just ends after you pick it, which I found vague as I got an achievement shortly after this and knew it wasn't the real ending, so I picked death, seeing as from the way Tragedy talks, he wants me to embrace it, which instantly kills all of the cops and the game proceeds as normal. Lastly, we have Headhunter, who is considered the final boss of the game, as this is a secret boss that you can fight, but you have to go through a number of steps in order to get it. You first encounter her during the prison alongside the dragon, as they're trying to get to the bottom of the Chrono Struck and cease all production on it, which is further confirmed during the game's ending, where he's looking at a plotting board filled with pictures and information about Kronos and the government's involvement in it, which I also hope gets talked about and shown in further detail with the DLC. The last encounter you have with her is when you approach the Kronos Bunker and learn that there's only enough dosage for one person, so you'll have to fight for it. As soon as you kill her, you go through and the game finishes with some additional cutscenes and a blind blowing discovery of who the unnamed man is, which happens to be Zero himself, a man who served under the Null program which, in summary, is a project that went through by the government in order to give soldiers superhuman abilities, providing them with an upper edge during the war. Zero happened to serve during the war alongside 15, and if for whatever reason Zero gets his memory back and they see each other again, nothing bad's gonna happen. All the game's story is about the Null government program, Zero killing for the sake of killing, and him slowly learning about his past and why he's doing all of this in the first place. Not once in the entire game does he take the time to think about what he's doing, which really shows how much he enjoys murdering and killing people. If he didn't become an assassin, who knows what he'd be doing as a normal human being. It's a great story and I'm aware that I probably didn't explain everything because there's more to it than what I've just said, but in summary, it's solid, interesting, and something different to explore which may be up your alley. Katana Zero has a cool dialogue system similar to games like Mass Effect where you can pick from a few choices, giving characters different lines of dialogue to create a somewhat fresh experience. I say somewhat because by the time you play through it the second or third time, you'll have heard it all anyway. The unique part of this though is that although each dialogue sequence is timed, you have the option to break that and talk over someone, forcing them to get straight to the point, which is cool for some parts because one of the game's achievements has you refuse your medication. Which I'm not sure if it has an impact later on, but pretty cool to be able to do that nevertheless. My favourite use of this is when you get interrogated by V. As you're getting interrogated by him, failing to use the correct response will result in your death, but this is done on purpose as new dialogue options open up each time you die, prompting you to say what V is going to say beforehand, leading him to get annoyed by you and eventually stop killing you, leaving his bodyguard to do the dirty work instead. Now, don't get any ideas that it changes the game's ending or anything like that. I just say like Mass Effect since you're given options on how to respond to situations. On top of having a great story, Katana Zero also has a great gameplay loop, which does more than enough to please Hotline Miami fans, as this game is essentially Hotline Miami but with extra features. If you've played Hotline Miami before, this game will be relatively familiar, but if you haven't, Katana Zero works like this. You plan your course of action, possibly changing up or quickly adapting to a situation as it arises, then execute as you see fit. The game has plenty of things you can do, such as deflecting bullets, dodging attacks like you're playing a Souls game, using throwables, and the environment to quickly disperse your enemies, and making use of the Cronus mechanic I mentioned before, where you can slow down time and do everything I just said, but slower. The mechanic also allows you to correct mistakes or create a new course of action on the spot, allowing you to easily do another action without fear of failing, which is the cool gimmick that this game has and what makes it special for me. 
Playing through a game like Hotline Miami means that everything you do has to be spot on. You can't make room for error there because if you do, you'll just get clapped. Katana Zero, on the other hand, allows you to correct mistakes and help to easily anticipate your enemy's next moves so that you can adapt accordingly. It's a beautiful thing and what gets me excited to play it every time as I just love seeing everyone get destroyed in slow motion. Cronus is very limited, however, and although it can be regenerated over time, it's very slow so you can only use it in quick doses, which is a good way to balance this mechanic out. It's simple and easy to learn but hard to master as this game is hard, I cannot stress this. Not to soul level difficulty hard, but to the point where you gotta use your brain to figure out the best way to complete a level. Not just left click everything and hope that it sticks. Katana Zero's level design is short and sweet, with multiple ways of completing levels. You can break soft walls to open up new paths towards your foes, throw traps and explosives at them to take out multiple targets, wall jump through lasers and pull a trick attack on an unsuspecting person, kick doors down to slam them down to the ground, drop a smoke grenade to confuse enemies, and many more. The amount of ways you can kill someone in tools that are given to you is amazing and can lead to some stealth game of BR style montages. It's freaking awesome. My favorite sequence in this game has to be the motorbike sequence where you're driving down a strip chasing V and getting rid of mobsters on the way. Sequences like these in these sorts of games always work so well, so I couldn't help but get excited when I found out a level like this was on Katana Zero. Couple that with the helicopter sequence, and it's simply bliss. The pixel art style and neo-noir setting go along really well with the game's themes and story. And even though I'm not sure what year this game takes place in, I can confidently say that it probably takes place the same year that it released it, considering that the world looks futuristic to the point with all this talk about time drugs and such. From the rooftop sequence, you can also see that the city they're in is locked around massive rocks, leading me to believe this may be a time where populations are divided into these massive districts as a result of what happened during the fictional war, but I'm just spitballing here. It could be older than this since Zero is using a Walkman of all things to play songs, which leads me to the last thing I want to talk about with Kasana Zero, which is the game's synthwave score, which blends in Chicago house, electronic music, and synth pop, and my god, is this ear candy. It's amazing how they were able to blend all these styles together, as it meshes well with the game's best and melancholy moments. One of the coolest parts of the game is when Zero is taking his recorder out to chuck on a beat before he starts the killing, as it seems like he has a bunch of songs to pick from for the right moments and scenarios that he puts himself into. Now obviously if we're talking gaming terms, then yeah, each song was purposely designed to fit the level, blah blah blah, but having it turn on the song beforehand and then turning it off whenever a key moment is about to happen is such good attention to detail as the protagonist is also anticipating that there is going to be a big moment happening which could provide him information on his past or anything related to Kronos and his current profession. They also use 1980s music as a means of inspiration for the OST, considering that the game's themes consisted of drug use and the effect of war on a nation's spirit. Oh, and the music slows down when you go into Kronos too. Vintage synths and drum machines were used in order to establish the majority of the sound. After completing the game, you'll be able to access speedrun mode, a mode that involves speedrunning the game, removing options such as cutscenes and dialogue, and opting for an experience where you can see how fast you can complete the game. There's also a hard mode for those that want to test themselves, adding new encounters and making everything harder. Since Katana Zero is a very short game, taking me around 5 hours to complete, this mode makes up for it, giving players more time to refine their skill and play the game more. Katana Zero is a short and sweet action platformer game, packed with great gameplay, an interesting story that, while confusing at first, becomes understandable after you reach about halfway through the game, levels with plenty of ways to complete them, and an amazing soundtrack that makes you want more. There's a DLC in the works for Katana Zero that developer Askisoft has been working on for a few years, and the best part is, it's going to be free. I have no doubt it's going to be great and I hope it ties up loose ends with the game's endings, as well as bring the conclusions and fates of all the major characters in the universe, alongside whatever new ones they add of course. This game is awesome and definitely worth playing, plus it's very cheap on Steam 2 at $21.95 AUD. Of course, you can always wait for a sale if you wish, but buying at this price is more than worth it considering all the content that you get with it. If I miss anything, comment down below. I'll have more coming to you soon. Peace.